Hi, I'm John Storms, and today we are working on assembling our Falcon F-16 V5 controller. So we're going to set up an enclosure like this. I'm going to get all my holes drilled out, and we'll work on getting the power supply set up, everything. We're going to build the whole thing. So we'll put this together into a series. But before we do that, if you could, please hit the subscribe button, give the video a like. It's super easy to do, and it helps me out a lot. Really appreciate it. Thank you. So here's my Pixel controller. Maybe you got to see the unboxing video. We're really looking forward to, to using it. Uh, the first step though is I like to prepare the enclosure. So I am using a Cable Guard 1500 enclosure. Uh, I don't think Cable Guard actually makes them anymore, but a bunch of people do. Uh, I know Kenneth Wired Watts has them, I think Wally's has them, Matto, you know, all the regular guys. Anyway, um, but I need to drill some holes. I'm going to start off by drilling out some holes. I have a fan cover. This is <clears throat> the Bud IPV1116. So basically what happens is, it has this ring, has these threads. You cut a hole to this size which happens to be this size, three and a half inches. See that? And we drill through the cover, and then on the other side, we attach a fan. Because I live in Texas, and we've got to keep them cool now. Cable guard, these will pop right off, like that. And usually I start with a single point, stick right in the middle, That's my starting point. Wow, okay. Man, this thing is torquing hard. Messy business. As much of that out as I can. Disc from the top. See, now I got myself a hole. All right, so this is the fan I use. This is a 80 millimeter, 12 volt fan. I get it off of Amazon, and. Um, I don't really care if they're particularly quiet. It's kind of handy if they are, but people aren't that close to my display. So on this end, I have a four pin connector. That four pin connector attaches to this board right here on that white connector between those RJ, two RJ45 ports. When I mount the fan, you, I want the moving piece on the inside because otherwise it gets bound up against the, um, the enclosure. So, I come here and I'm just gonna run my zip tie through the whole fan. through the little drilled hole that I made. That's three. And this last one is four. Tighten them all up. Now, got a nice little fan assembly. All right, that'll screw on just like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a tailpipe on this cover right about here. See, I just used this quarter inch piece of bent PVC. 
find a good spot for it. Let me get the glue gun going. Let's get that start warming up. So I don't need to draw any more holes in the top section. So to make sure I don't leave any little gunkies or little pieces of plastic floating around to interfere with my controller, I have this stuff, which is slime. I take the slime, ugh, and I roll it around on the inside of the case. It picks up oops, all of the little extra gunkies. Keeps them out of my controller. Do a little bit on the outside too. See? All the gunkies are in the slime, not in my controller. And some of the ridges here are getting in the way. Cut some of these ridges back. But the vent has a cleaner surface to sit on. So I'm just getting rid of the ridges. should sit a lot cleaner yes and those reds are sitting a lot higher so I can have something to screw on to see now the fans in there and this wire will run that way okay now let's do the tailpipe so the tailpipe I do in two pieces. So this is just some little one inch plastic venti piece that I found. And I run it through this side so that it pokes out the other side like that. This gives me a surface area that I can glue onto for my tailpipe. same time my hole wasn't perfectly down so it kind of seals up any imperfections and I just twist it on and I can't get over to the side just a little bit that way it doesn't get in the way of anything see and also from Amazon these are just little stick-on cable guards right to run wires and I do this just to keep the wire out of the way of the rest of the controller. So I do one here. And I do one on the wall because this one goes over the basically over the hinge to the other side of the controller to connect. And I just want to make sure it never gets in the way. Okay. Top cover is ready to go. Turn off the glue gun here. I got this. On the back here, they have these things where you can run things through and attach this to a post. I like to run a wire through and then hang my controllers from various things. So I'm just going to, while I'm here, I'm going to drill a hole on either side of this. the last thing I do but since I was remembering them okay so now work on the bottom section so the cable guard 1500 comes with these pre-drilled holes and we use none of them now some of the uh, some of the folks that have started making their own version or variant of the um, CG1500 don't include those holes which is actually really really nice
So now we're going to put a hole in for our power connector, which I like to run in on the right side of the box. There we go. See, that's a nice one right there. See? So the power plug will go there. I want a hole for, uh, for an Ethernet gland, which are these guys. What this does is it allows you to plug a Cat5 connection into this RJ45 jack. This goes on the inside of your controller, plugs into whatever you want. That way you don't have to run the cables through the box. And this is also three quarter inch hole. That one fits. Okay, next we do the three big glands. Where do I want to get these placed? classes I probably should have. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, we got it. Like that. So now I have holes. So this is for power, data, data, and these are for pixel output ports. Let's get out the uh, snide. Clean this up. It's always very important to clean up. You don't want any of this crap floating around in your controller. Not that I think it would cause you problems, but when something does go wrong, it's one less thing you have to worry about. Okay, so here's the power ground. So this is the end that goes out. This is the nut that will screw onto it. This is the inside nut. And you run through that hole. I'm not running wires through it yet because I'm not ready for that part. You do one of the big glands here. Actually, let me do them in order. So these are the Ethernet ones, or not the Ethernet, the Cat5. So run it through the hole. Like this. And then you got to remember to put the cap on. Just like that. All right. Now we'll do one of the big guys. Let's see. This gland is, I think it's on here. This gland is a PG21. Okay. And then I use this to run out five of the um, X Connect pigtails. This one, can I see what it was? The one that I used here for the power 
is a PG 13.5. One, not yet. Right. That's two. And the reason we're using glands is a couple of reasons. One is to keep the water out. Now I'm not, I don't try to make my boxes water tight, right? These aren't submarines, they live outside. Um, but in general, it's good to keep the moisture out. But moisture is always gonna get in. So a little gets in, but then it has a way to get back out. The other reason is so that they're tight, so that they hold the cables in place. Because you don't want the cables moving around or putting strain on the controller. You don't want them to wiggle out. If they wiggle out, bad things happen. The other RJ45 port. See? And now, this is the bottom part of the enclosure. So. Uh, that's my least favorite part of the, uh, the controller build is uh, dealing with the, uh, the enclosure. So now that that part is done, uh, we can get to the funner stuff. So you see, so this is beta. Usually this is the one I use for ethernet. Then I have pixels, pixels, pixels. This is another data port. Usually I uh, keep a, an option to get to the serial output port in case you want to hook up a lot of Rama or one of those uh, transmitters that does um, the bracelets. And then of course this guy here is for the power. Other half. And we can pop them back together. Okay. Very nice. Give a little bit of an arc. Now I have a hook and I can use this to hang it to a post. I can hang it from a tree. I can hang it in my garage to store it. Uh, a lot of times I have shelves behind my little pergola, but I'll have this attached to a wire that's connected to a hook just in case something breaks. It has an extra safety line. So I find it to be super, super handy. Okay, so now this is an enclosure that is ready to go. Uh, probably come in with some hot glue and fill in the, uh, the cracks here, right? Just so that uh, water doesn't come in through the fan. But aside from that, done. Hi, I'm John Storms and we are so we're gonna set up an enclosure like this. I'm gonna get all my holes drilled out. And do me a huge favor, give the subscribe button a click, give the video a like, and that would help us out a ton. Really appreciate it, thanks.